realize that all of our programs for parents and children and babies and teenagers, they're not just spread out on all four floors, but also east to west um, in every part of the building. And that can make it really challenging for first time visitors. We really want to make everything as simple and as clear as possible um, so that people don't feel like outsiders when they visit, that don't know the building and they don't know how things work. Um, and so what I would love to see happen is for the activities building to ultimately become this whole wing where families thrive and engage with one another and with the Holy Spirit. And so ultimately, I would love to see families using the gym as a breakout space um, where we currently have breakout as the auditorium. That can be a little bit challenging to find. Um, and then when they are in the gym and they're singing their contemporary praise music and worshiping together, they break out into the activities building. The babies are in the nursery. There's children's classes. Confirmation would be in there. Our youth Sunday school class would be in there. And we would even make space for adult small groups. Um, and that's between the 9.30 and 10.30 hour. And so um, to me, that's just a really dynamic vision, a way that makes it easy for families to take the step from worshiping to growing all in one hour. I think that's really cool. And so um, we, we hope that that's, the, that that's the track we'll be on, but um, this particular building project, as it's been mentioned before, is really just a very small first step. Where we're most part, the thing I'm excited about most is the children's area. I think uh, it's one of those things that's, that's been lacking for a little bit that we really need to uh, really reinvest our, our, our time and our money and our facilities into uh, to create a great program for our upcoming youth that uh, we're trying to grow in their faith in the Lord. And it's, it's amazing to see that the programs we have currently are, are doing so well. I mean, surprisingly, a, a lot of the things that we do in our church and a majority of it is really geared towards children, which is fantastic already, but I feel that we need uh, more facilities to kind of help uh, grow that and nurture that as, as we move forward. And I think- Love the church in their service area. Everything from Breakfast of the Heights and food pantry and the pie partners and uh, I don't know, we've even done um, little projects um, of just workmen, you know, getting together and doing things, and that's been really exciting. And we don't need anything for that, but we really do uh, need to kind of focus on the children's area. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention that that we are probably going to move in six to eight months, and um, but we're still excited about what's going to happen here. We wanted to be sure when this started to to give our um, our donation early and to be sure that it happens because it was such a great blessing for our family to have this church to grow in and we want to be sure that other families have that same opportunity. The Family Life Center project will begin with the demolition of walls and spaces marked in red. This will allow for fewer but larger classrooms to be built within the space provided. The restrooms will have a total makeover and all facilities will be brought up to building codes for accessibility. The secure entry is the breezeway between the main building and the Family Life Center. It will have exterior doors to the driveway and playground. There will be four larger, more functional classrooms within the space. The smaller children will share a toilet area in the southwest corner. The restrooms will be refurbished and brought up to building codes. A laundry area and janitorial room will be added as well. Phase two renovations will include two 
additional classrooms and a corridor for additional outdoor access or entrance into the gym. bringing in new members, uh, bringing in young families, uh, and also reaching out to multi-generational families. So mm -hmm. I think from the standpoint of the improvements in the fellowship hall, that'll be a great way uh, to fellowship and mm -hmm. to reach those multiple generations of families. Uh, it's very important that that happens. Um, Exterior doors on the 10th Street side will have to be replaced with windows and one emergency exit. The stairs and interior doors on the 10th Street side will be removed to make way for a ramp. The ramp will extend into the existing storage room in the corner. Three interior windows will be placed in the wall above the new ramp. This will allow natural light to enter the room and connect naturally with the corridor in the lobby. The ramp on the kitchen side will be enlarged by reclaiming some space from an existing pantry. The existing kitchen doors at the serving line will have to be enlarged. Some space will be reclaimed from another storage area. Some improvements to mechanical areas will have to be modified to bring them up to building codes. The restrooms will have to be demolished in order to bring them up to code. It is true we will lose a stall in each restroom. But when the project is finished, we will have an updated restroom that is accessible for everyone. The current Merle Anthony classroom will become the welcome parlor. The existing entryway will be enlarged and an additional entryway added. This will become an inviting area to be used for a variety of purposes such as a meeting place on Sunday mornings so friends and guests may enjoy a cup of coffee or as a gathering space for weddings and funerals. Breakfast at the Heights is entering its 10th year as an outreach ministry of Floral Heights United Methodist Church. For anyone not familiar with breakfast, we, what we do is offer a free hot meal of pancakes and bacon each Sunday morning to people in our church's neighborhood and the community at large. But I'd venture to say that most people are already familiar with breakfast because so many church members have volunteered to help it make it happen. Nearly every Sunday school class at Floral Heights, the choir, the Boy Scouts, the Wesley Foundation and MSU all have helped volunteer and serve breakfast. It is truly a church-wide effort. Breakfast has certainly grown over the past 10 years. While our basic menu of pancakes, bacon, juice, and coffee hasn't changed much, the number of people served down in the activities building has grown from a handful to 50 to 80 each week. Some of those coming have been attending for three to five years or even longer. And while breakfast is still a place to get a free meal, a safe place to get together with friends and socialize over a cup of coffee, and a warm, dry place to get out of the cold for those who may not have a roof over their heads, for many it has become something, something much more, a church home. Uh, we do this each Sunday morning from 7.30 to 9. To accomplish this, a team of faithful volunteers begin to arrive at 6 a.m. to cook the bacon, fill the coffee pots and jute dispensers, set the table with butter and syrup and prayer cards, and then when the doors open to the, of the gym at 7.30, our neighbors are met by even more volunteers who cook and serve the pancakes. Uh, we for the past several weeks, we have called upon people to volunteer their time, talents, and especially labor to prepare the red brick building across the street from the church to become the new home for Breakfast at the Heights. If you have not seen the work that has been done over there, please do so. We have completely gutted the interior, torn out all the walls, ceiling, ductwork, and electrical fixtures. It has been a hard, dirty, but fun job. Now that the volunteer de demolition has been completed, and if the church provides funds for it through the passage of the building campaign, the next step will be for professional contractors to turn the building into not only a home for breakfast at the Heights, but a multi-purpose facility that can be used for many groups throughout the church. 
It will have seating for nearly 100, a food preparation area, bathrooms, and hopefully even a shower. It will be available to the Boy Scouts, youth groups, out-of-town groups that visit our church to work in the community, and groups within our church for their meetings and activities. If the building campaign passes, the red brick building will become a tremendous asset, not just for Breakfast at the Heights, but for all of Floral Heights. Floral Heights Food Pantry was started by our church in 1985 and it has grown into the area's largest food pantry. We feed an average of 2,000 households each month. We are currently registering about 20 to 30 new applicants each week, which shows how fast our food pantry is growing. We have received our own 501c3 status and changed our name to Floral Heights Community Food Pantry. The trustees gave us some land across the street for our new building, and we are in the process of looking for donations to be able to build this building. The building will cost around $300,000. We are hoping that our new pastor, Don Yeager, will bring us some fresh new ideas since he has been running the Gainesville Food Pantry for many, many years. The church is also ready to make some changes, which includes remodeling of the Fellowship Hall, and the kitchen, a coffee bar, and a new secured children's area. We are looking at a timeline of January 2017 to be in our new facility, as long as we have raised the money. We appreciate all of our church members for volunteering, donations, and the support and encouragement that comes our way. And last but not least, I would like to remind you that we would love for you to fulfill your, com your pledges for the building program. Our Breakfast at the Heights team has already gutted the old red brick building across the street, and we hope to move in by September 1st, 2016. Thank you. <music>